YouTube, I'm gonna show you how you can take images like this and turn them into a design like this all from scratch, so let's jump straight in. So this is the final design that we're gonna be working towards. Now, this is a combination of a few different images that I've blended. So I've got an X-ray image, a $100 note, and some smoke images up here. And I've added some type and some textures and effects onto this as well. And we're gonna begin with the X-ray face just here. So I'm gonna come up to File, New. Then these are the settings we're gonna be using. So copy these, 3840 by 4800, 300 resolution. I'm gonna hit create here. Now the first step is to bring in our X-ray image. So this is the base image. I'm gonna rotate this. I'm gonna shrink this down within the canvas bounds and then bring it right below the edge of the bottom margin. I'm gonna make sure our background is set to black. So I'm gonna press D to reset our colors and command backspace this. Now from here, I wanna try and work in this $100 note. So source an image online, which was this, which is kind of a $100 note shaped into a cone, which I thought was perfect to look as if it was being smoked. So from this point, I wanna remove the background so that I can start formatting this into the image. So I'm gonna come up to select and subject. Now this is gonna isolate just the note here and then we can use layer masks. So come down here, clip on mask. And now I can begin to resize this. So it's gonna open my transform tools and I'm gonna play around to try and fit this within the mouth of the X-ray. So the whole concept for this poster is called put your money where your mouth is. And I wanted to take a, just a literal approach to this in kind of like a cool and effects driven way. So from this point, I want it kind of overlaid over the teeth so that I can add in some shadows and make it look as if it genuinely belongs there. So I think in terms of size and placement, this is pretty good. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller, slightly more tilted. And I think that works for me here. So we've got slight overlay with these teeth, which is fine. And now we can move on to the effects in a second, but we can bring in the remaining images first. So now I wanna make it look like there is smoke coming out of this build just here. So I'm gonna bring in this smoke image that I've sourced and, and all of these images that I'm using here are sourced from Unsplash. So unsplash.com and I will link it in the description below to use. Now with this, my idea for the composition is I see smoke along the top and slightly around the edges. I think I just wanna isolate the top half and make it look as if the kind of canvas bounds are a box for the smoke to kind of bounce off. So in terms of placement, I want this kind of top area of smoke to be filled. So around here is good for me. Now, if I drag this underneath, you can get an idea of composition. That's good. And then I can play around here with, with it in view. I'm gonna make sure it's lined up with this side here maybe make it slightly bigger. And I think placement there works perfectly for me. So now I'm gonna bring in the actual smoke stream image. Now this is gonna be coming out of the dollar bill itself. I mean the hundred dollar bill. So I can resize this and I'm gonna bring this below the dollar just to get an idea. And now in order to kind of get rid of the background of this so we can see it in and amongst this smoke, I'm gonna use blending options. So I'm gonna come down to effects on this layer, select blending options. Now from here, we've got our blend if functions. Now this is gonna reveal or hide either the dark values or the light values in the image so that you can kind of isolate certain parts. So we wanna isolate the lighter areas. So we're gonna drag out the darks. So on current layer, I'm gonna drag this in and you're gonna see how it's gonna remove all of the dark color. Now this is very harsh. So we wanna split this and kind of make it a bit more spread. So we're gonna hold option and it's gonna split that slider and create a bit of a wider range for you to work with. Now this isn't gonna be the final blending. We will come back and adjust this once we've made some light effects, but just to get an idea of the composition, we can work with this at the moment. So I think placement's good here. I think that looks believable. And you know, the smoke's going straight up, straight into this cloud here. And I think that is gonna work for the moment. Now with our images and composition sorted, we can actually start working on the effects. So I'm gonna bring our X-ray image back down to the bottom of the layers. And now I'm gonna add in a layer mask on our smoke two layer, which is this kind of surrounding one. And I'm gonna get a brush out by pressing B. And I'm gonna make this big enough to be able to do quite a widespread. And I'm gonna set this color to black and I'm gonna just hide this kind of bottom area. I've noticed now I need this to be on soft round brush. So make sure that this is selected and then we can just drag and remove that kind of like weird smoke area around the bottom. Now you could add some down here just to kind of make this kind of a bit more of an atmospheric effect, but I'm gonna leave it out. Now with that mask, what we can do is we can start adding in our shadows on this as well as I wanted to replace this 100 logo here with my logo. So the first step to doing that is I need to kind of create this or in order to remove this 100, I need to blend it in with the back of the note. So to use that, we're gonna use a healing brush tool. So if you come over to your left-hand side on your toolbar, hold down click and you're gonna see all of these options. I want healing brush selected. Now with my healing brush selected, I'm gonna hold alt or option and you're gonna see this like change in cursor from when I press this. Now this is creating a selection area, which is what you're gonna to use to then blend. So I'm gonna hold option and click on an area that I want it to look like. And now you can see that as I move around, we've got this area kind of like pinpointed. And what you're gonna do is keep repeatedly click this until it blends. So I'm gonna click here. It's gonna ask you to rasterize your layer. So I'm gonna make a duplicate just to save it and then press okay on that. And you're gonna see as I click and repeat over this 100, it's gonna slowly remove these details. Now, obviously this is looking very dark, but we touch over this. 
Come back over to the light area, hold option again, click again. And now as you come over this, it's gonna slowly get lighter and lighter until it blends in really well. You just wanna keep making a new selection. Now I don't need this to be perfectly too light because I think it will look a bit more genuine if there's a bit range of color in there. So just keep dabbing over the spots. And there we go, I think that's pretty clean. Now it looks as if it has been genuinely removed. So from this point, I'm just gonna drag in my logo and now I can size this down to the kind of rough area I want it to be. Now immediately I know I'm gonna to need to add some effects on this. So I'm going to add this into a group using Command G and I'm gonna add a color overlay. Now with this color picker, I'm just gonna select a dark area on the note. For example, this shadow of the text here. Now immediately this is looking, you know, a lot more in place in terms of color. Now from here, we can start playing around with the placement. So I'm just gonna put it horizontal for the time being. And now I'm gonna use warp to try and mimic the perspective of this note bending around. So come up to edit, transform and warp. Now this can be quite difficult and you need to make sure that you select these lines, otherwise you're gonna get this like notification sound error, which is very annoying like that. It's very precise. So first thing I'm gonna do is drag this, this uh, corner point up here. I'm gonna get my corners sorted first. And then you can try and use these anchor points to bend it in the right direction. And I'm gonna repeatedly get this error, which is incredibly annoying. There you go. You will just need to zoom in and click it until you're able to select it. Now, this kind of center line, we're gonna drag up to create this bend in it. And then we're gonna push all of these lines up here. You can just select by the middle. I'm still getting used to this tool. It's quite an interesting one. There we go. Now, because this is so small, this doesn't need to be perfect in my case. I'm just kind of trying to get the perspective like somewhat accurate. I know it's very difficult because of the, the bend in it. It's quite hard to get well. But I think here sounds good for me. So I'm just gonna press enter here and I'm gonna make this slightly smaller. And now within this placement, I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually just gonna come back into that, repeat the same step, just entering the warp tool again. And drag this down. I want this kind of area to look a little bit uh, thicker. And there we go. Yeah, so that works for me. And if I just make it slightly smaller and then I'll be happy and a slight rotate on there. So now I'm gonna add in just a Gaussian blur just to blend this slightly more. So come on to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just add on 0 0.8 to one. You know, if I see it on one, you see that it's quite blurry. Maybe just kind of play around the zero and one range. See if you can get something that just makes it look slightly better blended. There we go. And now we can work into adding these shadows. Now to make our money look like it's better blended within the mouth, as if it belongs there, we're gonna to need to do some masking. So if I hide and reveal this, you're gonna see that there's some teeth on the x-ray image overlaying. So what I'm gonna do is open up our mask image, I mean our mask selection on our dollar. If you don't have one already, just click mask down here. And I'm gonna start painting out some of these areas that have this on. So I can, tr I can change the opacity down of this and just start painting these in. Now, the reason I'm doing this so loosely is because when we come to add the effects, it's gonna be a lot less visible. So it doesn't need to be an example of perfect masking. I kind of just want the areas that are overlaid to just be removed, does not need to be perfect in this case. So I'm just gonna use a soft brush, just make sure that these kind of bits are overlaid. You can just hide and reveal, see if you've missed anything. And there we go. Now in terms of placing that within the mouth, that's the kind of like tooth masking done. Now, what I need to do is add in some shadows to make this look like it's better placed within it. So I'm gonna create a new layer over our dollar bill and name this shadows. And now I'm gonna select the mask that we have by command clicking it, and I'm gonna get a black brush out. Now I'm just gonna paint in a brush. I'm gonna paint in some shadows just on the left-hand side here, as well as at the bottom and just slightly up the right. Now it really is as simple as that in this case. Uh, if you're coming to kind of, without using those kind of effects that make it a lot more of a flat color, you would need to put more detail into it. But I can just go around and just slightly tweak our dollar bill mask. So for example here, get my black brush out. I mean my uh, white brush, sorry. And I can just go around these edges here to see if we can remove any of that fluff. And there we go, it's already looking a lot better. So now we've added this logo, we can try and start blending this smoke a little bit better. So before we add in the Xerox effects, I wanna make sure that the lighting of the smoke is somewhat even, just so that the lighting when it comes out in the effect is also even. So in order to do that, you're gonna see that this smoke is quite yellow and very bright compared to this one that's a lot more faint. Now we've got our blending option set here, which we can come back and start adjusting at this point. So maybe we're gonna reveal some more and we're gonna start adding some levels layers just so that we can kind of level this lighting out. So come down to your adjustments down here and select levels. And now I'm gonna use command option G to clip this onto our smoke layer. If you don't use that keyboard shortcut, just come down here and select create clipping mask. And now play around with these sliders. What you're gonna to wanna to do is bring in your midtones and bring in your highlights. It's gonna make this smoke a lot thicker. And now we're gonna to need to balance this with our blending modes. And this is gonna to start to kind of level out this color and density. So what I'm looking for is just for a lot more detail in the smoke, uh, ignore these kind of like overlaid areas because we can amass them out. But for me right now, this is looking a lot better. It's looking a lot brighter. So on our smoke layer, I'm now gonna create a mask, get a big old black brush, and now we can start masking out these kind of lighter areas. When you come near the smoke stream, you wanna make it smaller so it doesn't actually paint out any of the smoke itself. And there we go. Now you can come back into blending options if you want and start playing around again. 
seeing if you can find any better balance, I'd say just stick with it where it is. Now we can also add a levels adjustment to the smoke layer beneath. So same steps, clip it to that smoke layer. And now we kind of want this lighting to be a lot more even. So reveal a bit there, gives a bit more density. And I'm gonna set this smoke layer over our initial one. So now we can come into this layer, bring in our blending options, repeat the same steps as we did before. And we kind of want these smoke layers to be blended. So kind of reveal it enough so that you can see it behind. Play around with these, that's good. There we go. So now these are a bit better blended, we can start moving on to applying the Xerox effect. Okay, now to create the Xerox effect like we can see on this original, I'm just gonna to explain to you briefly what it is. So it's gonna create this kind of like black layer mask, which is going to isolate all of the highlights. Everything else is gonna be covered and it's gonna be covered in this kind of like stippled pattern. And now that's gonna enable you to color in kind of each individual aspect that you want to. So you can see here, I've got three separate colors with the blue, the kind of creamy and the red. Now, in order to do this, the first step is to create a new combined layer of all of your layers here. So I'm gonna group all of these using Command G, just name this layers. And now you can use Command, Option, Shift and E or Control, Alt, Shift and E on Windows. And now I'm gonna name this Filter. I'm gonna convert this into a smart object so that we can adjust the effects on it. Then come up to Filter and Filter Gallery. Now we're gonna be using four effects. One is Stamp and then three layers of grain with different effects on them. Now the first step, what you want to take is add in this stamp adjustment. So come into sketch and stamp just in this bottom right corner here, and you can copy these settings if you want to. Make sure that your smoothness is low, and then from here you can adjust your dark and light balance. I think around 16 works really well. You know, this kind of smoke is blending in a little bit better with this effect over it. So to add another filter, like I have here, we're gonna come down and press this plus button. So for me, I'm just gonna remove it because I've got them in. But add that in, then come down to texture, select grain, and you can copy these settings here. Make sure that grain type is set to enlarged. You can play around with these and kind of find out these new kind of cool intricate effects. So for example, we've put it on speckle. There's all of these different grain types that can kind of create the effect that you want to make. I'm going to set this one to enlarged and I'll create a duplicate of this, add another grain, set this one to clumped, play around with your intensity and your contrast, add another one, set that one to enlarged, lower contrast. So now you can play around with all of these values. You can get it to just how you want it to be change your intensity, lower it down. I think around here I'm really happy with, so I'm just gonna hit okay just here. And there we go, now we've got our black and white filtered effect. Now we can start adding in the colors. Now to start separating the colors, we're gonna be using the color range tool. So what we need to do is create a shadow mask on this filter layer so that we can start changing all the colors around it without changing the entire thing. So select your filter layer here, then come up to select and color range. Now just select anywhere in the black area and you're gonna see it's gonna select all of all of the white areas are the revealed areas. So you can change the fuzziness here. I'm just gonna keep it where it is. And now on this layer, you're gonna hit layer mask. Now immediately you're gonna see the color's gonna slightly change. Now this is as the original color is now applied, except we're hiding the shadows. So it's gonna look like it's a little bit more drawn on. So with this, we can now start applying a background color. So we can come into our adjustments here, add a solid color layer and select the background color you wanna use. I'm gonna just select this as a kind of like dark gray for the moment. And then I'm gonna right click on this, create clipping mask. Now this is gonna be our background color. So you can now change this and it will just change this dark value here. So let's name this shadows. And now we're gonna add in some more color fill layers and we're gonna add them beneath this mask layer. Let me duplicate this, drag this beneath. Now let me set this to a color we wanna use and you're gonna see how it's gonna fill in these highlights with this flat solid color. So I wanna create this kind of like vibrant blue on the X-ray. So let's go for about here. And now what I wanna do is set this layer mode to color. Now this is gonna stop it from being flat. Color is gonna influence the original layers, which is gonna keep this depth and detail in it. So now, because we just want this X-ray to have this color, we wanna, on our layer mask here, we're gonna name this X-ray, select your mask, and we're going to hide this. So we're gonna have command backspace with our background color as black to completely remove it. So from here, select a white brush and then paint in the areas you wanna use. Now I'm gonna make sure that my brush for this is set to hard and it's gonna be a lot easier to paint this in clearly. Now don't worry about going over the lines, obviously because we've got this shadow mask, nothing is gonna get overlaid. So you can be quite free with it. And now already you can see this coming together. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna name this smoke. Now you can select the smoke color you want. So I'm gonna set this to kind of like darky red. Now reset the mask. So delete this, add in another layer mask, completely set it to black, repeat the same step, just bring in your white brush and paint over the areas that you now want this kind of red color. So I'm gonna drag across the whole top here and I'm gonna set this to darken. Now this is gonna create this really cool smoke effect whilst kind of keeping the depth of the color. So now we can play back around with the color again here if we wanted to adjust this. I think around there is perfect. You see here, I've just gone over the lines here, which is fine. So just bring in my white brush, just make some adjustments that you need to. Now as well, this kind of face area on the bill, I want to be a separate color. So repeat the same step, just duplicate this. I'm gonna make sure that's set back onto color again. 
Choose your white brush and paint in an area that you want. Once you've got it masked, now once you've got it masked, you can just reselect your color. I'm just gonna go for like a really kind of pale green here. There we go. Just adds a little bit more detail onto that note in the center. Let me adjust this to be a bit more brown. Let's say around there's good. So now we can just throw in some type. So I'm just gonna paste in the text that I've been using for this previous poster. Now, typeface I'm using is Clash Display. Now this will just be really quick and easy. Just place it where you want to place it. And I'm gonna group this, duplicate it, and convert this into a smart object. This is as I'm gonna reply a displacement map by coming up to Filter, Distort, Displace. Set my scales to 20, and I'm gonna be using this film dust displacement texture. I will link this in the description for you to use yourself. Now it's gonna create this kind of like distressed outline. Now I can just add a stroke overlay onto this. Filter and stroke. I'm gonna make sure it's set to the same color as the text and then just bring this size down to where I want it. Now I wanted it quite thick like this, that is perfect. And now in order to just recolor this, let me throw this into a new group using Command G, name this text. Now from here, add a color overlay and you can play around with how you want it. Mess around with placement, do whatever you like. I'm just gonna set this to kind of like a faint gray blue and just shift this over slightly to this side. Perfect, now just to top it off with texture, I'm gonna add in a noise overlay. So come down to your adjustments, solid color, make your hex code 80, 80, 80. Now this is a 50% gray. So we wanna convert this into a smart object, come up to filter, camera raw filter. Now in the effects panel on the right, you're gonna see this grain drop down here. We're gonna increase this. I'm gonna keep these settings how they are just here and press okay. Now when we set this to overlay, this now becomes a live noise layer. So as I hide and reveal this, you're gonna see this really faint detail come up basically across all of these highlights in the image, which work really well. Now, just to top this off, I'm gonna add in one more texture, which is from Design Syndrome, which is this really nice paper cut texture. And I'm gonna bring the opacity down to, let's say 30% here. Now it's gonna kind of create this like really nice distressed paper detail. And with that, make any final adjustments you wanna make. And that is the poster complete. Well, guys, as always, thank you for making it until the end of the video. I hope that you can land something and you can add something to your own design arsenal. Now YouTube's gonna recommend you another video of mine just here, the things you need to see. So go ahead and watch that and I'll see you over there.